This video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. So if you can't beat them with your weapon, then why not grab hold of them tight and never let go? Yes, in this Mithras Rules video, we are going to be looking at the rules associated with grappling. Hello everyone and welcome back. If you don't know who I am, my name is Inwills and I'm a content creator and live streamer from the United Kingdom. And you have stumbled across one of my Mithras rules videos. So as well as these rules videos on this channel, you can also find our actual play of RPG systems and also a series that I call the Gibbering GM, when I take aspects of role playing games and well, gibber about them. Before we get into the actual video, I would like to give a special thanks to two people from the Mithras Discord, Avalanche Surfer and Matt E, for helping me unpick this rule and, well, yeah, put me right. I had some misconceptions about this rule, but they sorted them all out for me. And if you are still around at the end of the video, I will let you know about a rule that I have played incorrectly ever since I started to play Mithras some years ago. And I must say, I'm pretty, pretty embarrassed about it. You can use grappling in a range of situations, but I have two that are really my favourite. The first is when I want to hold or prevent someone from attacking. And the second is when I have lots of small mobs who are doing very little damage. In this second situation, my intent is that the I will send all these small mobs onto the character who will be hanging off their arms, legs, heads, chest, and eventually the character will no longer be able to move and down they go. So in order to grapple, a creature must have at least one limb or appendage, it could be a tentacle, empty and capable of actually gripping the opponent. The character or mob needs to announce that they're going to grapple before they roll their combat style or their um, to hit roll. So in order to resolve a grapple, the attacker will make an opposed roll using unarmed skill versus the combat skill of the defender. Now remember this is an opposed roll, so when you roll the dice you need to succeed and if you both succeed then the highest score wins. Of course there can be levels of success as well, so a critical would win over a standard roll. So to resolve the grapple, the attacker will make an opposed roll using unarmed and the defender rolls their combat style. Now, if the attacker wins, then the grapple is successful. And if the opponent wins, the grapple just does not happen. They fancy slipped out of it. Even though this is an opposed roll, either party can gain specials by achieving one or more levels of success. So if I give you an example, say Ulrich is grappling and gets a critical hit while the goblin just gets a failed roll, then Ulrich will have two levels of success and can use two specials. If the grapple is successful, then the effect is dependent on the location of the grapple. If it's a limb, um, arm or leg, then it has been grappled and that limb cannot be used. It's inoperable. If the location is the head or the torso, so chest and abdomen, then all skill checks will be hard as long as that grapple remains in effect. Hopefully you can see now that the more of those little monsters we can get on and start to grapple, the skill checks are going to get higher and higher. 
So back in our example, Ulrich has the goblin firmly grappled in a headlock. Now every turn the goblin is being grappled, the grappler, Ulrich, can make an unarmed attack roll which is opposed by either the unarm or brawn skill of the creature that's being grappled. If the grappler is successful, then the other mob will take damage equal to the damage modifier of the grappler. So if you have a big, beefy person that has a damage modifier of like plus 1d6, then you can see there's going to be significant damage being done while in that headlock. But what about the poor goblin? <laughs> Perhaps it's getting a little bit tired of having its head firmly grappled by Ulrich. Can the goblin break free? Well, yes. When it comes to the goblin's turn, it can take the aforementioned struggle action in an attempt to break free. If this option is taken, then the opposed role needs to be rolled using either unarmed or brawn skill. If the goblin wins, then it will break free. If not, the headlock remains. If you would like to see some grappling in action, then do check out our actual plays using the destined rules. There's a wonderful part when the party are attacked by imps who are hurling themselves at people trying to attach and grapple with them. And if you have made it this far, then yeah, it's confession time as I hang my head in shame. So ever since starting playing this rule set, which is an excellent rule set and we love it, whenever someone was using the evade skill, we've all, or I, have always been using it as a differential role. This often got me into trouble since when you have a differential role, both combatants can actually succeed. So I never knew what to do, you know, if they both succeed. So I was literally using evade like you would use parry. But I was playing that rule incorrect. So when anyone evades, it is an opposed role. So there'll be only one winner. And that makes so much more sense now. Now, if you want to hear the rules guru explain everything about evading, then do check out the Mithras Matters podcast, episode 33. If you have found this or any of my videos on this channel supportive, then please do support the channel any way you can by commenting or liking uh, the posts. I try to reply to all comments and I learn so much with, from interacting with you. So please do comment. Hope you understand grappling a little bit more than I did beforehand. <laughs> and so and feel free to let me know how you use it. And yes, I now know how to use it. Evade correctly. Until next time, I hope all your opposed worlds are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithras, everyone. See ya. Bye.